Another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new trailer for episode three of the Ice Brood Saga, No Quarter. Of course, we were told the title of the episode back when they released the blog post about there being no voice acting for this episode. And there is in fact no voice acting in this trailer either. So it's all very interesting. Um, it's now become apparent of like, ooh, this is this is definitely different. It's going to feel different uh, just from the trailer having no voice acting. But more on that in a minute. Um, I'm not going to just play the trailer. I'm going to um, stop and go, stop and go uh, on certain things. This video is uh, in view of like that you've already seen the trailer, but we're gonna talk about it. Okay, so let's let's start. Of course, we got the T for Teen ESRB rating: Blood, Mild Language Use of Alcohol and Violence. Um, so here, the first couple of shots, um, I don't think they're necessarily anything to gag over. <laughs> um, it's just kind of setting up the scene. However, the char that we see here are highlighted in red and are glowing in red. Uh, so they're probably enemies. They are probably of the Dominion. Uh, wink, wink. More on that when we get to the actual blog post and trailer so uh we have these these shots and then we get this very interesting well that what caught my eye is the building in the background um and also the flag this seems to be a new war banner flag um for the char i don't know if it's the, is it the steel war band is it the new dominion war band it is kind of icy it's blue toned, you know, you have maybe ice and the great sword. Um, and overall, I really like the icon, actually. It's I haven't really stopped to look at it too much, but it's really cool. Um, we have this settlement in the background, which really caught my eye in terms of like the architecture. So uh, I'll touch more on the architecture and the feel of the, the map in a bit. Civil war is upon us. The United Legions. Dot, dot, dot against Bangar's a Dominion forces. So within this actual scene, probably of a story instance, we saw the commander, we saw a couple of the char, Krisha, uh, Ritlock, we'll see uh, Ephraim um, from the Flame Legion, and I think the char that just walked off seemed to be Bangar. Actually, we can go back here um, a little bit. Let's just, let's just go back. Here we go. Um, I went back a little bit too far, but this seems to be like where we're probably going to be starting off or, you know, pretty early on in the story beat. The, all, all the char will probably get together. And that looks like Bangar, if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, it doesn't look like Bangar. Is it Ryland? Oh, it's probably Ryland. My brain was dumb. Um, Yeah, this seems more like Ryland. I think Bangar has very distinct features that are not this or this could be Ryland or this could just be another Dominion soldier um we'll read more on the blog post but this is no longer just the steel war band it seems Bangar is dr drumming up more forces um and have called themselves the Dominion uh, against Bangar's uh, Dominion forces so this could just be like um a representative of the Dominion Force, of the Steel War Band, uh, trying to maybe have a council, hold council with the other Char leaders, and it uh, doesn't seem to go very well. And they walk off. Krisha and everyone is kind of just, you know, in disapproval. And then we get to this next instance of the new map, Drizzlewood Coast. Uh, I am very excited to go back to a very lush green area. Um, just with dense forests. Maybe not the forests of the Maguma jungle, but forests of like a human settlement, much more um, reminiscent of, you know, the areas that we see in real life. I've, I believe they had commented that they drew influence on Seattle and the Washington forests that surround the areas of ArenaNet. And 
if that's the case, I'm very excited because I've seen some pictures of their their area, their region, and it is so beautiful. But in this shot, we see probably a defend point or assault point. Um, just a lot of action. We get the Ice Brood Saga logo and uh, a submarine. We get, ooh, this part. I actually stopped at just the right moment. I have not actually been able to do that at all. This is one of the very few instances where they show us the map before we actually get to go in game. Um, and I think it honestly works and drums up a lot of hype. We were able to discern that the specific location of this map is where, of course, this island is on the right. You can easily see it uh, in the Shiver Peaks. And, uh, you know, that shaman has a post lining it up. You can go in-game to kind of get a feel for where this is going to be, especially with those key land features. And it also seems like the ice kind of curves upward. There's a portion which is white and seems to be pretty icy, you know, connecting to the Shiver Peaks. And um, in the posts that I've seen, they've all been pretty square, but I would like to see that the, the snowy, icy area is actually extended a little bit. But we zoom in a bit more. We actually get to see points of interest. We saw some vistas. We saw a waypoint, or waypoint. Yeah, a waypoint. I, was, I almost said wayshine. Uh, we see a waypoint. Um, we see the actual named areas. Drizzlewood Coast, uh, Petridge Overlook, Port Cascadia, Break Root Basin, Fort Defiance, Volks and Mines, Umbral Grotto, uh, and it continues upward. The new map wide event is Battle Cry, and they had hinted that this is going to be very reminiscent to World vs. World. So we're going to be probably having to take over certain landmarks and areas of the map that are outlined in red, trying to, of course, turn them blue and get whole map coverage. And uh, there seems to be a white area in the middle. This could just be a neutral zone. Uh, could be, could not be, you never know. Uh, the map uh, burns out, and then we see some more fighting of char. Motorcycle in the background once again. Um, just some more fighting, you know, definitely getting that feel of a civil war. Airships, bombs, siege, um, transport. Um, we, right there, we probably saw, I think her name is Vision. Um, or the sniper in Visions of Steel. Uh, it has been hinted at that we're going to be fighting Ryland's warband members once again. So the people that we've got attached to, um, we might end up killing. You never know. We might kill them or at least maim them. We're going to have to turn them into enemies. And the Steel warband, like Nicobar, Vision, um, the one girl in the tank was so funny and I really liked them. Um, and I actually, okay, speaking of, to continue the narrative, uh, I stopped on this shot. There is a bridge in the background that is very interesting. It catches my eye. Those eagle-like wings on the top. Very intriguing. Um, and I just have really liked the feel of this map so far from what we have seen. Of course, um, the snipers, airships, lifting. Um, and then we get the new mastery. United Legion Way Station. I don't... Okay, they go into detail about the blog post. I don't know if I'm really a fan of this. I'm not too sure. They're definitely using their special action abilities and special action, you know, mechanic more often, especially with the essences and also with now with the United Legion way station. It's going to be used much more frequently. And the special action, I feel like they need to have a specific button for special action. One that is like, you can move around and adjust where it is. Because it's like kind of in the middle of the screen. It's kind of at a weird location. I don't know. I would just like more customize, customization for the special action button. Um, because it is so heavily integrated. Um, hey, maybe allow profession to have mechanics where your special action button could be used like for all those knockdown traits like when you're knocked down you know breaks done and have an effect that could be a special action to be much more honed in on the player's reaction i'm that's a whole other video but uh we're, we're gonna continue on it seems to be a a battle mechanic where you place mines 
you release, release electric shock waves, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not. A, I don't know how I'm feeling about these battle masteries, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And then we get to the reward section, what everyone is, you know, frothing over. Um, we get Tengu Echo and Stormcaller weapon sets. We get a, pr a brief preview of the Tengu weapons. And quite honestly, I, the first time I watched this, I was watching it on my phone. And I was like, I don't know. They looked so small, I couldn't discern a lot of detail. But seeing it on a larger screen, a larger monitor, they actually look pretty cool. I really like the staff. I really like the great sword. The Asura, they're already small, so their weapons are pretty small. I can't really tell what they're holding. Maybe it's an ax and a focus. Uh, and then we zoom over, zip over, uh, to the Stormcaller weapons. Ah, oh, these Stormcaller weapons I'm definitely going to be going for. Uh, I think it'd be great for a Tempest uh, if they want to go back into that Storm, you know, play style. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm really excited to see these Stormcaller weapons. We, we see a Staff, a Mace, a Shield, probably a Scepter, a Focus, a Hammer, and a Greatsword. They look really cool. New rewards, play dead emote. You know, these are probably going to be the, you know, the end of the achievement rewards. I think it's going to be really cool that we can just play dead. I don't know. For RP reasons, that'll actually be really cool for role players. These emotes, honestly, are really great for RPs. Um, and then additional new rewards. You get additional weapon skins, an armor set, and helms. Guys, we are getting so many rewards. They are... Guild Wars 2 had a, had a long period of not releasing a lot of rewards with their Living World uh, and Saga releases. Well, Living World releases. In the Saga, they completely flipped it on its head. We're getting so many rewards. We're getting so many weapons, skins, uh, armor sets. We're getting um, just be bits and pieces of gear, like with the, the Stone Summit Dwarf. I actually got the shoulder piece uh, when I did my uh, strike, you know, my... Um, Vision of the Past yesterday. So it's like, you still have a lot to go for if you want to get these skins. One thing I would like to see, maybe with the next Saga release or Saga update, is like one or two more weapon or stat combinations. We haven't had one in quite a while. I think the last time was with the Plague Doctors. Quite honestly, I was so infuriated at the Plague Doctors because it's Vitality main stat and healing main stat. I would have loved it if it was condition damage main stat, healing main stat. We have yet to see a condition damage main stat, healing main stat, and I think it's perfect for Scourge. If they had condition damage, condition damage, healing main stat, concentration, expertise, minor, Scourge, perfect. Scourge would be amazing. Also, the Sans Savant trait, I'm gonna say it again, you can uh, completely scrap that and change it because no one, I think, really takes Sans Savant because of the increased cooldown. Also, Serpent Siphon, please change. Uh, continuing on. Um, we see a bear outfit. Oh my god. I'm gonna, you know, of course, touch on this a little bit more uh, when we get to the blog post, but some more helms. Um, sneak preview. And the new strike mission, Cold War. Honestly, the Ice Brood body slamming is just so fun. It's just so visually appealing and just really cool. And then we get new, no quarter, May 26th, 2020. So we have about three or four weeks until it actually releases. They're probably going to be, you know, teasing more bits and bobs of the release in the coming weeks. Like next Tuesday, they might, they might release a Twitter post of like, you know, a Vista or, you know, some other reward or some other you know quick battle or area of the map they tend to do that now i think that they are i think that with releasing these trailers earlier and earlier it definitely allows you to get to to build that hype and for them to build momentum with smaller like media posts be like oh don't forget don't forget in two weeks don't forget oh in one week don't forget and then you know when you lead up and when you get really close to the release, you can start dropping a bit more uh, larger info. Um, so that is no quarter. Um, honestly, very, very excited. Now I am going to shift over to the blog post, um, which I actually do not have up right now. I'm so professional. I should have actually done that. Um, but the blog post, I wanna just touch on a couple more things 
that might be of substance. So the new map, Drizzlewood Coast, this dense and beautiful woodland, is the stage for a brutal civil war between the Dominion and the United Legions. With diminished resources, strategy is key. Claim territory from enemy forces led by Ryland's Steel Warband and push back the front lines in a map-wide meta event. So we definitely get a hint that the Bang Bangar's forces are now going to be referred to as the Dominion, the Dominion forces. And now the Char are now under this one banner of the United Legions. Well, they probably still have their each individual banner. Um, Maybe, maybe that actual banner is the United Legions. Maybe it's not the Steel War Band or the Dominion. Because if I remember, if I recall correctly, we had that blood red one. No, that could just be the Blood Legion. Um, this is just speculation. We haven't been, this has not been confirmed. Um, but definitely something to, t to talk about. Next up, new mastery, United Legion's way station synchronization. Boy, is that a mouthful. You take advantage of United Legion's way stations throughout the Drizzlewood coast and gain special action skills to aid you in battle. What this means, I'm not too sure. We saw a couple instances of them in action, but no real description. And then ad in addition, the essence manipulation master tracks have been expanded with a fourth tier. <sighs> I'm not a fan of the Essence Manipulation Mastery. Um, I think it was... I think it's cool. I don't know. I feel like they've honestly killed the whole function of CC bars and strike missions with the Essence Manipulation Mastery. Um, CC skills no longer are really that useful because you just use the Essence Manipulation Mastery. It's honestly very, very sad. Um, you no longer have to have like a build that focuses on interrupts or stuns or, you know, saving your, your interrupts. I mean, if they reduced the CC that it does, at least for strike missions, that'd be cool. I know the bone skinner, you can't often do it. However, it has such a long cast time that once you get it off, the CC window is already done. So it's just, it just doesn't feel great. But you can upgrade it to a fourth tier, allowing you to use your special accent, action skills on enemies regardless of their essence. That kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? And then skills will chain to nearby enemies with bonus damage if their essence is aligned to the skill. I really have grown to very much dislike the essence manipulation mastery. If they had kept it in the ice brood, like in the area, if they had kept it in Buar Marches, that would have been fine. I think it was good where it was at. Don't you? Don't you? Is that just me? Um, but yeah, perhaps another uh, topic of discussion in, an, in another video. Uh, new strike mission. You survive. This is what I'm very excited about. You survive an onslaught from waves of Dominion forces, culminating in an intense final battle. This... Also, the screenshot is of Ice Brood and Char together. Not to touch on a video that I did recently, but um, will Bangar and will Ryland eventually join forces with Jormag and Jormag help them? This this is definitely not a mutual relation, relationship of trust. They are probably manipulating each other, um, Jormag and the Char, that is. But um, this is going to be very interesting to see what happens within the actual story beats and then we have the new rewards unlock two new weapon sets a four-piece armor set inspired by the cer ceremonial garb of norn bear shamans a new emote and more i'm so happy and excited that they are continuing this norn culture norn um armor pieces that we've had in game for quite a while but haven't been accessible to the other races nor the playable char or not char the playable norn so this will be very cool to see if you want to become a bear shaman we have the raven ceremonial garbs which i have the pants version i have yet to complete the set i really want to i feel like it's actually very hard to get but you know what longevity if you're willing to go for it or if you just want to buy it on the trading post i don't know those up to you and then we see some more screenshots of you know, the landscape. All in all, this was a summary and kind of 
you know, discussion on what we've already seen. And uh, thank you everyone so much for watching. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Like the video uh, if you liked it. Comment down below your thoughts. And I will see you guys in the next video. My Patreon and all links are down below. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.